what's up YouTube? It's me, Evan, back with another video game collection video. This time, the N64. You can see Super Smash Bros. is already in it. Now again, Nintendo. This is the first time they did this. Four player ports so you could play with friends and have a good split screen fun. Also got this extra boost so you could have better graphics in your games. That was an add-on later. So this system, I was totally content with my Sega Saturn at the time when this came out and was announced. But I had a friend named Jose. Still got him. But uh, in high school, I think freshman year, he was like, dude, he had an N64. He was always telling me how great it was. DD Kong's racing and all that, whatever. I, I couldn't care less because I was a Sega diehard fan. But then he's like, I heard a rumor that there's a game coming out where you play as Nintendo characters and you can fight each other. You can have Mario fight Pikachu or Samus or Zelda or Donkey Kong. I was like, you liar. He was known to lie a lot back in the day. I was like, there's no way Nintendo would let their licensed characters beat each other up. They're a little kitty company like Disney. They wouldn't allow that. So we go to the computer room at our high school and searched it, and it turned out to be true. Immediately, I went out, once I saved my allowance up enough, and uh, bought the system. And Smash Bros. wasn't even out yet. <laughs> I just like heard the rumor, had to get it. So I went and got the system, and I got the... Um, Atomic Purple Controller Bundle Pack, so it came with a controller. And the first game I got for it was uh, Mario Party, and the other game I got was uh, Mario Kart. Yeah, so uh ended up being an enjoyable system for me. I ended up becoming addicted to this Smash Brothers game. So let me show you some accessories. This here is the controller mine came with. See-through purple. I also bought a blue one, a red one, and a regular one. I can't find the regular one right now, but this uh, controller looked like shit to me. But when you go to a kiosk at a Toys R Us or a Sears or whatever, you could try out the games and it felt really good. Like this, you can play some games. Like this, most of the time you played. And uh, this didn't feel bad, but it was very, very cheap. These buttons felt alright. Triggers was weird. You got your hand like this, you can't use this. But it was very comfortable overall. And Mario Party, they had you breaking these like a mofo. Because you had to go like that. So of course you grind your hand like that. Snap these off. I think that's what happened to my gray one. Um, yeah, but... Weird design, but ended up being functional for the games. Nintendo pulled it off. Another accessory I got is a converter. So it's a plastic piece. So you can fit Japanese games into the console. Because the cartridges had a different shape. So you couldn't play them on different consoles. First game I'm going to show off is Donkey Kong 64. After I became a rabbit fan of Smash Brothers and main Donkey Kong. I wanted to play all his games. So I went back and got this. I don't have a box. I just found it at a video game convention for really cheap. So I picked it up. Didn't like it. In fact, I didn't. I also picked up all the Super Nintendo games. I didn't like those either. Not a fan of uh, rarest video games. Donkey Kong, at least. Here it is. My favorite game on the system. The one I had the most fun with. Mini Donkey Kong. If they released this on that... I hope they do an N64 Mini. I will definitely get it if this is on there. Or if they release it somehow on the Switch. I'll definitely pick it up. I mean, I love this game. So, so many hours of fun. I used to take my system to school. So we had hour-long classes, which was like an experimental thing back then. So we had a free period where you're supposed to study. We would bring our systems in and play each other in Smash Brothers. Um... Fighting games like Marvel vs. Capcom and Street Fighter and also uh, 
What else do we used to play? Wrestling games. My school was obsessed with wrestling games as well. Here's the game I bought with the system. Mario Party. It was a board game. It was a lot of fun. I love this game a lot. You go on a board game, roll dice, and play mini games at the end of everybody's turn. Mario Golf. This made me f fall in love with arcadey golf games. This was an incredible game. I loved it. Each character had different stats, and the courses were amazing. So much fun. Super moves, whatever. Great, great game. Mario Tennis. This made me fall in love with tennis games. I ended up getting them for uh, the Sega Dreamcast. I'm loving Sega's Virtual Tennis and all that. But this is where it started. This is my first one. Now, I'm not a fan of first-person shooters, so you will not see GoldenEye. I did play a lot of GoldenEye, in perfect, which I didn't like. I thought the game was crappy. It was neat to have four people play at once. Per uh, perfect Dark was a lot better, I thought. I mean, that game, you could have uh, NPCs as long, fight along against each other as well with the four players. You couldn't do that in GoldenEye. It was just four people on a map. I didn't like that game, but... I don't really like first-person shooters to begin with, but I do love dinosaurs. So I ended up getting this game, Turok 2, where you go around Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, killing dinosaurs. I thought it was fun, but just for the single-player mode. I was a huge Attitude Era and, you know, Hogan Era, era fan, Eat Your Vitamins back in the 80s, of wrestling. And this was the be-all, end-all for me. WrestleMania 2000. Had so much fun over the years playing this game with my friends. Like I said, we used to bring it to school. We all used to play against each other, have epic matches. We used to take it to friends' houses. I didn't get the follow-ups because my friends had them. Like uh, the, and the WCW games and the No Mercy. I would just play with them, but I always liked this version the best. And the creative character was amazing. I made uh, Blade from... You know, Wesley Snipes from the Blade movie. That was my favorite character to use. My finishing move, he'd go behind you and snap your neck. And um, I made Juggernaut. I would make different comic book characters. It was a lot of fun. I'm not a fan of Rare, but I was a fan of this game. This was another unbelievable game. I mean, the English in England, they're very perverted. This game is super perverted. I mean, it's... An adult game on the N64. I never thought I'd see the day. F funny, crass jokes and big boobs. And you fight a giant mountain of shit with toilet paper. And his teeth are made of corn. It's an amazing game. So much fun. Really good platforming too. I love arcade racers. I used to love going to arcade playing racing games. And N64 had a ton of these, so this is F-Zero. This was a good one. A lot of fun to play. I was obsessed with Cruising USA and Cruising World in the arcade, so I was excited to get my hands on this. It was fine for the home port, but nothing compared to the arcade. Got this futuristic motorcycle racing game game. It was okay. This will go down in history as one of the worst games ever made. I owned E.T. on Atari 2600. I own Superman for the N64. I own Batman Oh, Dark something. I can't even remember the name of it for the original Xbox, which is, in my opinion, the worst game ever created. Worse than E.T. even. And uh, this one's right up here. Automobili Lamborghini. I love Lamborghini. It was my favorite car ever made. Excited to get this game. Worse physics. Worse graphics. Cars don't even look like they're touching the ground. They're floating. And when I would play it, I would get seasick. I would get motion sick. Nauseous. Horrible game. Top Gear Overdrive is an arcadey racing game, and it was actually a lot of fun. It does have good graphics, decent physics. 
And here's the game I was talking about. And I got this just because uh, I had to. Because I have the world's largest dark side collection. So any video game dark side's in. Any kind of me media whatsoever. I got to get it. And I guess he appears in the end. So I had to get this crappy game. Pokemon on the Game Boy was a huge deal for me. Pokemon Red. So when they came out with a Pokemon video game for the N64, I had to get it. They didn't know it was just a stupid camera game. You just take pictures. But the graphics are okay. And you throw apples at them and they look like dullards. But it was a lot of fun. It ended up being. Now this was an epic idea. So you could put your Game Boy cartridge with your stats and your team on your N64 and put them in 3D and, and have battles. I think my team was uh, Charizard, Dragonite, Mewtwo, Articuno, and um, uh, what's that ghost Pokemon? Gengar. So that was my main team that I like to rock with. I love this game. And then this is an on-rail shooters made by Sammy. And it was touted to be the great one of the greatest on-rail shooters ever. So I had to get it. Only came out in Japan. So that's why I had got the converter. It's an awesome game. And that concludes my um, N64 collection. Thanks for watching.